What is the most worthless movie you have ever watched? Did you know there was a sequel to Lawnmower Man? Well, now you know. For the record, I didn't pay for it per se. My friend bought the first Lawnmower Man on DVD, and the sequel was included as a bonus because absolutely no sane person would buy it otherwise. Lawnmower Man 2. Beyond Cyberspace. Okay okay okay. I know this movie is sh- absolute sh- she. But, in the summer of 1996, I was a plucky young half Thai Canadian kid, stuck in rural Thailand for two months. When we went into town for groceries, I found this tiny little video shop that had all the latest movies on VCD, but they were 99% dubbed in Thai. They had a very small selection of English audio but Thai subtitled movies, one of them being Lawnmower Man 2, Beyond Cyberspace. It had Matt Frewer in it. I recognized him from the Fox TV Mardi Gras movie from earlier in the year an X-Men movie before there was talk of any X-Men movies Generation X. God, I was. 12. I had no perception of what a good movie was. All I knew was it was a movie I could watch and understand while being stuck a bazillion miles away from home. Saw Lawn Mower Man in the theater. Back in the day, I was excited because I was a Stephen King fan and two of my friends were going to see it with me. My two friends knew it was a trippy movie and, like they did every movie, took acid before. I had to drive us there and back. They thought the movie was amazing. I was disappointed almost immediately, but got to watch and listen to the MoHH and R and laugh at it. I never even saw the first one but a couple friends and I saw the sequel in a Walgreens a few years back and decided to give it a go because wow did that box look rough. I have few regrets, but that's one of them. Open house. I felt disrespected for watching that piece of sh**, way late to the party, but I actually worked on this piece of sh**, it was one of the worst experiences of my life and the creators of that film deserve all the hate I see in the world for it, brings joy to my heart how many people viscerally despise that movie, what made it go so wrong, was that the one where the mom and son moved to a ritzy home in the woods that was for sale, my roommate and I tried to watch that movie when we were drunk and we couldn't even get through it in that state, ha. Ah. I came to this thread hoping someone would mention this movie. My bestie and I love horror movies and we love open houses, so figured it was a winning movie choice. However, what the actual f was this crap? God, it was terrible. No one reacted anywhere near normal for what was happening around them. Even for a horror movie, nothing made sense. Plot points went nowhere. So infuriating I couldn't even feel scared. Just terrible. Without a doubt. Incubus. William Shatner, in the only movie ever filmed in Esperanto, as good as you'd expect based on those two facts alone. Wait does Shatner speak Esperanto in it? Yup. Here you go. Wow film where everyone needs the subtitles. At first I wanted to comment that my dad wouldn't need subtitles because he's fluent in Esperanto and crazy about his hobby but then I heard Shatner's pronunciation. I agree. Everyone needs the subtitles. In the interest of fitting in my biggest lie of the day relatively early, I speak Esperanto. Titanic 2. Still sank? Hey, I worked on that. It was my first film job, and if you want stories of how dumb it was, boy do I have some. Do tell. Wait, there's actually a Titanic 2? Glacial Drift, yeah, it's set in the present day and about a cruise ship in the Caribbean. A glacier floats all the way down from the Arctic and specifically targets the Titanic 2. Do you own the only copy? The Artemis Fowl movie was awful. I loved the books as a kid and had such high hopes. The plot was changed so much it's barely the same story. My personal pet peeve with that movie is how they took the most badass moment of the book, Butler going medieval on a troll, and turned it into a wacky chase where the apex predator troll gets taken out by a chandelier. Didn't the book have a bit about Holly's helmet cam footage of that being introduced to the Lep Academy's curriculum as the definitive example of how to deal with a troll? The destruction of the characters was the worst. Mulch is not in a lie. He's a criminal put on work release. He's out for himself. Holly is a woman police officer in a society where they look down on women in power. It demolishes her struggle and character development to have her commander be a woman. Artemis isn't some effing surfer kid. He's a calculating sociopath, not completely, he cares about his family and his image and nothing else, and he purposefully kidnaps Holly for the express purpose of extortion of the fairy people. Artemis' father was never a friend of the fairies, hell, I don't think he even knew of them, just, the whole thing, 
My wife has forbidden me from talking about it because I just go on rants. It's worse than the arrogant attempt. Never before have I seen a film so prominently advertise how much I am going to hate it in the first scene. Artemis Fowl was a deathly pale, physically hopeless kid who hated the very concepts of fun and outside. The fact his first appearance is rocking a surfboard just told me that the script writers had at best read the synopsis at the back of the first book, if even that. At least the Aragon movie was about a dragon rider who traveled to kill an evil king and there was an evil stepbrother thrown in the mix. The Artemis Fowl movie was about somebody who also happened to be named Artemis Fowl. I knew it was going to be terrible when it opened with Artemis Fowl surfing. S-U-R-F-I-N-G. Let's make an Artemis Fowl movie but, up, uh, tiny. Artemis Fowl is the only movie I've ever straight up quit. I've sat through some terrible movies. Aragon. The live action Death Note movie. I've even put up with The Last Airbender. I've also had a grudge against the Ghost Rider sequel for the past decade. Never left the theater for any of them. Artemis Fowl, however, is an offense to both God and man. It made every other movie I mentioned look like Academy Award winners. Tall Girl or Sierra Burgess is a loser. Just awful. Sierra Burgess message is basically it's okay to be a shy person if you're insecure. Go wreck everyone life's and then emotionally manipulate them into forgiving you, D. Let's catfish a dude and then blindfold him and kiss him without his consent. Agreed 100% and tall girl that thing with that guy carrying around a milk crate just so he could kiss her was so idiotic. Tall girl had value for the you think your life is hard, meme. Disaster movie, 2008. Had a rare opportunity to visit with my dad and that was the movie we decided on. Should have gone to the park. We love most of the parody movies, but there wasn't a funny bit in it. Genuine waste of time money. Isn't that like the lowest rated movie on IMDb on Feo? Could not have picked a better name for the worst rated movie ever. The movie sucked big time. But the scene where all the Narnia medieval type characters are running into battle and in the middle of them are a couple of random stormtroopers now that made made me laugh pretty hard because it was so stupid and unexpected. I'm reading the comments section and I'm happy to report I've never heard of 95% of these movies. The 41 year old virgin who knocked up Sarah Marshall and felt superb about it. Why would you make a parody of comedies? Wait. That was its own movie? I saw the case for it when I worked at a used movie store and I just assumed it was a 3 film combo pack. The worst kind of movie is one that makes fun of way funnier movies. I actually bought it thinking it was a cheap 4 pack. The director followed it up with. 30 nights of paranormal activity with the devil inside the girl with a dragon tattoo. Those movies are terrible even when their references are somewhat timely. When they age 15 years and none of the jokes are understandable anymore they become even a step beyond. Check out Plump Fiction as an example. Buried underneath all of the terrible references and non sequiturs are maybe one or two chuckles that weren't elicited without a fair amount of shame and guilt. The only quoted review on Wikipedia is a slapper. Not another teen movie and scary movie were great. But then they kept going. Not another teen movie is still absolutely hilarious. Chris Evans is great and the movie is just so damn funny to me still. Little Miss Run Home to Daddy, Ran Home to Daddy. The delivery of that line still kills me. It's like he realizes how stupid it is halfway through. But then he just leans in any way and is proud of it. Janny's got a gun. Ends me. Every time. Ginger Dead Man. A friend and I. Being fans of campy B-movie horror thought we'd get our fix with this obviously bad on purpose film. We made it about 15 minutes in before we were in total agreement that it was completely unwatchable. But, Gary Busey. My mom was guilted into buying a Christian friendly movie from the church when I was a kid. It was called The Buttercream Gang. It was about a gang of de-good as they referred to themselves as buttercreamers. I was probably 12 when I finally watched it and couldn't tell if it was supposed to be a joke. Yes, I saw this as a kid. I grew up Mormon, at a friend's house. They were the type who could only watch Disney movies or Christian films like The Buttercream Gang. Not thought about that film in years. Thanks for reminding me. I remember it being cheesy. But I was 12 and wanted to be polite at my friend's house. I had a friend that their parents actually dubbed Disney movies to remove violence completely. She was about 18-19 when she finally found out that Mufasa died in The Lion King. I too watched this in a Mormon household. The movie is dog sh. My mom was also convinced to buy this movie through some church program. It cost $15 or so. 
and two weeks later, my sister and I found about 50 copies of it at our local dollar store. My mom was so mad she spent so much on it that she made us watch it multiple times within a few weeks and then told us to never mention it again. My mom was so mad she spent so much on it that she made us watch it multiple times within a few weeks and then told us to never mention it again. That wasn't very buttercream of her. My mom was so mad she spent so much on it that she made us watch it multiple times within a few weeks. Why did she punish you for her mistake? Dude, I have memories of what feels like a fever dream watching this movie. Didn't one of them go off to the city and come back a dickhead and then miraculously turn good again or something? I think I saw it in third grade. I wasn't even sure that this was a real thing that existed until you just mentioned it. 365 days. A really, really bad 50 shades rip off that I regret wasting time watching. Though I didn't finish it. I've never watched it. But have watched a lot of people talk about it and always cringe when they play the are you lost baby girl? Clips. A oh wow rip off of a bad movie. That's got a beach. Dragon Ball Evolution. Yet that movie is terrible. I trust this guy's analysis for sure. So much is wrong with this movie and the characters look nothing like their original counterparts. Goku never looked like Goku at all. He looked more like Ben 10. He goes to school like Spider-Man. Learns airbending over everything like he's on and is something Goku never learned to do in the original anime manga. When he transformed into Uzuru he looked more like a werewolf than an ape and the fact that he transformed during an eclipse and not a full moon like the original did. And he uses the Kamehameha like a Rasengan from Naruto. Also that dude was a creep toward Chi Chi. Piccolo, despite being well portrayed, looked like a rip-off villain from a typical alien invasion movie. He didn't look like Piccolo. He looked like a mix between a Skrull, Green Goblin, Shrek, and Megamind. Bulma wasn't Bulma at all. She was more like some random girl they took out of a cyberpunk film and put her in this movie. It just shows you how much this movie never looked or felt like the original source material at all. Without that movie Dragon Ball Super would not exist. What's the story? The movie I most regret. The Emoji Movie. The most boring and pointless movie I've watched. The Last Light. Still don't get how Sony Animation went from the Emoji Movie to Spider-Verse. Hey. They also made Cloudy with a chance of Meatballs and Hotel Transylvania, which were both good movies, ignoring their respective sequels. I feel Sony Animation gives their people carte blanche as long as it doesn't go to over budget. You'll get a lot of sh but occasionally you'll get a hit. Cats was the only film I ever considered walking out of. It was like mental self-harm. I knew what I was in for. I tried so hard to behave myself in the cinema. But watching respected veteran award-winning actor Sir Ian McKellen frantically lick and slurp milk from a bowl was too much and I lost it. I'm glad I saw it in a rowdy screening where you were allowed to be as loud as you liked. Otherwise I couldn't have taken it. What happened to the white wizard? My poor kids thought it'd be like high school musical but with cats. Luckily I had just dropped them off so I didn't have to share in their suffering. What did they say about it after? We knew it was going to be terrible and made a drinking game out of it. The over-the-top terrible reviews were the only thing that actually made me want to see it. If it had been merely bad, I wouldn't have been so intrigued. Instead, it became legendarily bad to others point where people were clamoring for the butthole cut, which just adds to the mystique. My friends and I tried the same thing. We hit the Rebel Wilson scene and were like, you know what not worth it and just turned it off and drank while talking. As a kid I was so extremely obsessed with the 1998 Andrew Lloyd Webber version of that. From everything I've heard about it, I'm never watching the new one. I'm still a fan of the original musical. But that movie did no favors for the few of us who will still admit that openly. For those curious why, it's an impressive athletic feat to see people dance for two hours straight. The costuming was fantastic. And the musical numbers were charming and quirky. The route the film took highlighted none of this. Quick editing deadened the impact of the physicality, CGI ruined the visual aesthetic, and the overlaid commentary from actors interrupting the flow of the music was needlessly grating and humorless. How you miss the mark so badly that both theater fans and furries hate cats. Well that's just impressive. No one expects the story to be good. It's cats. The bar is so low on that. Just make something cute to look at and you're halfway there already. The direction they chose gets me so worked up. Catwoman the basketball scene alone. Holy sh. Halle Berry. Dribbling while shaking her butt. 
guy, visibly horny looking around to 9 year olds like damn you guys see in this sh that movie is the room of superhero films, it's terrible, and everyone needs to see it. I don't think whoever wrote or directed Catwoman ever actually read a single comic book featuring the character. They just saw half of the 2002 Spider-Man film and went, let's do that but with cats or something. Also, the bad guy is a manufacturer of makeup, because girls, am I right? Let's do that but with cats or something. Oh, god, I just imagined Munga Jerry and Rumpletties are fighting the Green Goblin. What the hell was up with all the cuts in that scene? Could the actors really not bounce a refined basketball? <laughs> Cannot believe Verigan has not been named yet. There's a reason nobody's mentioned it and that's because some things need to be forgotten and Aragon the movie is definitely one of them. I wish someone would try again. You can get your hopes up. Paulini is actively looking for a streaming service to reboot a film show franchise. Last I heard was Disney Plus being open to it somewhat. Son of the Mask. I saw it at the movies at age 12 with my mom and cousin. There was an obviously mentally handicapped man sitting in front of us just loudly guffawing the whole time. At the end, he turned around towards us and told us it was the best movie he had ever seen. A while back I downloaded it just to check if it could really be as bad as I remembered. It was. But that's not the point. The point is that I forgot to stop it. And I accidentally seeded it until my ratio was 75. 1. I am so, so, so sorry for how much of that monstrosity I've personally spread. If the bleating of the media industry is to be believed. You've prevented 75 people from paying for that god-awful movie and funding the creation of more movies like it. Society thanks you for your service. Avatar, The Last Airbender, saw this live-action film in theaters and it was such a horrific letdown after the series. The acting was terrible. Saw the film first and couldn't work out why people love the series so much. So glad I actually tried the series and now I can see why so many were so upset with the film. Zombies. No I didn't spell it wrong. It was one of those Sifi channel only movies. Where this new zoo was testing on the monkeys and the monkeys just made all the animals at the zoo zombies not the humans the animals. At one point I saw the cameraman and the producer in a computer screen. Worst movie ever. Any of the kissing booths. The booths didn't even kiss. Tired seeing it with my mom since I knew it was horrible and wanted to rant about it. She thought it was good. Fifty Shades of Grey, I thought it would be so bad that it's funny, it was kind of funny for the first 10-15 minutes, but then it was just real eye eye boring and poorly made, not outrageous enough to be entertaining, but bad enough to be frustrating, the book trilogy were all terrible, wcgw if they make a movie out of it, wife took me to one of those, I fell asleep, I do remember a scene where the rich guy is flying a helicopter and crashes, I'm thinking, okay this is kind of interesting now. Next scene, the girl finds out he crashed, she's a mess and all sobbing. Next thing you know, the guy shows the F right up at the door. Totally fine, what the hell, why even have that scene? You guys are out here naming big budget mainstream films, and I'm stuck with a mountain of no budget slog fests to choose from, like Horrors of Spider Island, Curse of the Headless Horseman, and She Gods of Shark Reef. Dart I don't make good life decisions. The MST3K version of Spider Island is fantastic. Sorting by controversial has its own fun. The Last Airbender. As soon as I heard his name pronounced tongue, I knew it was going to be a show for the ages. There is no movie in Bossing Set. Here we are safe. Here we are free. 365 days. Complete and utter sh Wife loved it though. People need to stop making films based on Wattpad fantasies. 365 days. The same part of the Polish community apologizes for this piece of crap. A good day to die hard. Die hard 5. I was like let me see what all the hate is about. So I watched it. 15 minutes in and I'm bored of this movie. Everything that made die hard what it was was missing from that movie. Pretty sure they had some script somewhere and decided it'd sell better as a sequel to a solid franchise. I get what you are saying, but ironically, they had done just that with the first four films, in order. Nothing Lasts Forever was a novel by Roderick Thorpe. 58 minutes a novel by Walter Wager. Simon Says adapted from a screenplay by Jonathan Hensley, and a wired article called Farewell to Arms by John Collin. I believe the fifth one was the first one specifically written as a diehard film, 
and it was by far the worst, the only good thing it did was make the fourth one look more palatable by comparison. Jack and Jill, in one season of Survivor the reward for winning one of the challenges was they all got to see an early screening of Jack and Jill and then pretend on camera they thought it was fantastic, wow, I kinda thought you were kidding. Then I went looking for the clip, at first, I saw this guy's dead eyed smile upon being told what the reward would be, it's the face of a man who sees defeat no matter the outcome, later on, I see this poor lady staring at the screen in mute confusion, perhaps wondering if it's the producers having a laugh instead of the winning team, I'm also 50, 50 on whether they put Rob Schneider in makeup and snuck him into the theater in place of one of the team members, I guess producers needed someone they could trust to laugh on camera as if he really thought the jokes were funny. The cherry on top, though, is the 30 second motivational speech on how the family message of Jack and Jill deeply resonates with the challenges they face as a team. Absolute dirty force. I'm gonna bat 4 but here and call it 4 stars. My favorite story about this movie is a guy mentioned on a podcast he saw it in a drive-in on a date and that she was sucking him off in the car but he couldn't finish because he was so upset about the movie. Dunkaxano. Artemis Fowl. Aloha, I love her, but Emma Stone the fighter pilot is up there on a level with Denise Richards the nuclear physicist. The human centipede, too. The love guru, we fell asleep at some point, then the usher woke us up at 1am. There was exactly one good joke in that entire movie, if your uncle Jack helped you off an elephant, would you help your uncle Jack off an elephant, then now you have missed nothing off worth. After Earth, that movie sucks so bad, I love sick fee so I really thought it would be good given the premise, but they got so many things wrong it seemed like they were lazy, that movie sucks so bad, I love sick fee so I really thought it would be good given the premise. But they got so many things wrong it seemed like they were lazy. For a second I thought Sick Fee was some subgenre of movies I hadn't heard of instead of a typo. Jaden Smith has all the presence and charisma of moldy dish sponge. Starship Troopers 2. Well, I only watched the first 10 minutes, 